Hi Mike, Alex here. Um, this is a jig that I've now customised. You'll find it set up in a 16 index uh, configuration basically because I just didn't want to waste all my time cutting 36 kerfs. Um, let's see if I can, I'm not much of a cameraman. I'll try and zoom out. There you are. That's the jig set up or whatever. And I shall now go over the other side. Okay, over here on the other side, you'll notice I've already set up. All you need, what you need to do is draw a center line, center this part of the jig over the center of the blade. I haven't switched out the blade. I've only got a um, narrow blade in there, but for the demonstration purposes, it'll do just as good. And what I've done is I've made a test cut to make sure I haven't gone down too low. This is the smallest wheel this jig will take and if I went any higher up or whatever I start cutting into the gears. So I've slowly snuck up on it that's why I've already pre-done that. I didn't want to waste your time. Okay I'll get around the other side and I'll start uh, cutting the wheels and uh, cutting the kerf and you'll see what happens hopefully. You'll notice the action on the index pin which is uh, this little unit here, and that's where all the activity is usually. Okay, and this gear up the top here is the driving gear. Let's hope, this is my first try, so we hope it'll work. lost count so I don't know where I'm up to I think I've done it there because I heard the thing so I shall stop it now I'll come around this side and see if I can give you any constructive criticism no, that's about it. Um, as I said, it's just a narrow, narrow wheel. The kerf's all done. Um, as you saw, it was pretty quick and pretty straightforward. Um, and that's it. Now, what I'll do is I'll try and set it up with the maximum wheel I've got, which is about a nine and a quarter inch in diameter, and see how it goes through. I'll still stick to the 16, only because, um, look, at the end of the day, it's easier to manipulate because you've got a lot of travel between indexes. When you're on the 36 configuration, you only have to, you've got to take it easy because you move it a little bit too far and you miss a cog. You can come back to it, but uh, that's beside the point. Anyway, I'll turn it off and switch out. Okay, uh, I've got the big wheel on there. It should be still centered, so I haven't changed the lateral positioning. All I've done is lifted it up. You'll notice I've put the bigger outrigger on. The reason is that I could have made this small outrigger with this channel much higher, but I don't think it would have been as stable because of that channel down the middle there. It would have been too wobbly. Anyway, first cut. Notice I haven't even done the test curve. I don't know what the height's going to be like. I don't have to worry about it. I've got plenty of clearance. Turn the saw on and here we go. They are not too bad. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and you should be back to square one again. 
Next day. Right. Um, now, one of the things you'll notice that that's pretty big curves. Now, I actually did move the table at the last one. That's why you find that is bigger than what it should be. I actually moved it instead of keeping the pressure. As you can see, there is a little bit of play on it. Now, unless you keep, what you always do is keep pressure in one direction or the other. This time, I had the pressure on it, but this time I moved it back. Anyway, the point is, if you want to put curves in the middle, what you can do is twist this wheel until you get it in the next middle. Make sure this is all snug up tight. And see, watch that play. Set in the middle. And then off you go again. That didn't turn out too good. You did something wrong there. That's way out, that one there. Why is that? Oh, again, pressure the wrong way. I'm making a total mess of this. Yeah, I am. I'm making a total mess of it. I'm not doing a very good demonstration here. You can see I'm not being consistent with my lateral pressure. I'm sort of like allow, not allowing for this play. Look, actually that was not a what I classify as a very good demonstration because I mucked up the way I was holding the wheel, as I say, that there is just that little bit of play in it. Now on a large wheel like this, naturally that's going to be magnified. On a small wheel, you can ignore that. But because of that, as long as you apply constant pressure to one side and make sure you always do it in the same direction, you should be able to get away with it. But again, um, unfortunately, this wheel isn't designed for, or this jig isn't designed for large wheels. And naturally, well, you might be a quarter of a mil out here, it might translate into quite a few mil up here. So uh, that's it. Now it's up to you to decide whether you're interested or not interested. And uh, I'll send you this uh, video and we can either talk or you can judge yourself. And that's it then. Catch you later. And there's the two wheels side by side. I'll try and get the camera still. Oops, the other way. As you can see, there's a little bit of tear out on the little wheel. That can always be covered up by our zero clearance backing board for it. Um, and as I said, with the big one, it's just a matter of making sure you have consistent pressure. But unfortunately, as I said, the smallest amount of play over that large diameter is going to make anything stick out like dog's balls. Okay, gotcha. Back again for another take. I just suddenly realised I made one big fatal mistake as well. The whole jig, I'll put the wheel back on, the whole jig is designed to be controlled, the rotation, whoops, there it is, with that little gear there. And you can then control it and, as I say, keep pressure on it to keep it in the same direction. What well, mistake I made is because this big wheel is there, whoops, there it is, um, I tended to turn that and sometimes when you turn that you will actually move it along the uh, spindle and get it out of whack um, unfortunately that's just the way it is um, and uh, yeah so uh, as I say you know it's uh, you've got to decide whether this is going to be usable on your for your requirements or not 
Bye again.